Look at the stock of Starbucks Go. This morning, the coffee chain reported a spectacular killer quarter, a top and bottom line beat with fantastic same store sales up 8% globally. Wall Street was only looking for 6.8%. Even China was better than feared. Earlier today, we got a chance to speak with Luxman Narasimhan. He is the CEO of Starbucks. I want you to look at this story. The trust owns a big slug of it. Take it away. Luxman, this is the most exciting time I can recall in years for Starbucks, and it starts on a terrific day at the stores. Think about it, Jim. Thank you, by the way, for having me on. Today's the day all our stores in many countries turn red. I started in a store at 6 a.m. The backdrop was red, the aprons were red. Today's the day we start holiday and we share the joy. And do you know the flavor for the season for us? Well, I just finished pumpkin, so give it to me. Pumpkin may still be available for you, but the flavor of the season, Jim, is gingerbread. Gingerbread chai. A big recommendation. I know you're a triple venti cappuccino with skim milk guy. You're going to try. It's pretty the amazing you do my trick. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, gingerbread chai. And in some places, you've got to call it gingerbread chai tea latte. I get a lot of mail about this. Don't call it chai tea, but it's gingerbread chai. Okay, I wanted to start with that because you are a product guy and a person who knows what people love. But you also know what people love worldwide. That's why, in many ways, I think you're unique. You know what people like, say, in Italy. In Italy, can you imagine this? First of all, the genius of Howard Schultz. Um, he goes there, uh, sees the spirit of Italy, and he brings it to the U.S. and introduces Americans to the routine of Italian coffee. Then we gingerly go back to Italy, and he creates this temple, the Milan Roastery. It's an incredible temple to coffee. And it's stunning the way it does. I went there and I was completely blown away by how good it was. Then we go even more gingerly saying, you know, maybe not. We've opened 20 stores in Italy. Do you know the number one skew there? The espresso. The espresso at a Starbucks in Italy. So if we I go, if I have a Starbucks uh, in many different countries, I may find the best of what that country does at Starbucks. Completely. You know, we have, uh, we buy coffee from over 500,000 farmers all over the world. And uh, when you go to that country, you will find coffee from that country as well if they grow it. Now, let's talk China for a second. I know that you've done integration, backward integration with China in terms of roastery. And I think that's very important because a lot of people are saying, wait a second, China, I'm worried. But are, are the Chinese against someone who is by China for China? Well, first of all, China is a tea drinking country when we went there in 1999. Howard went there. He said, I'm going to commit to building the specialty coffee industry there. So what are we doing now? We are helping them grow coffee in Yunnan. We just opened this big factory. It's the best and most advanced, most green factory you can think of with a very advanced distribution center. It ensures freshness of products. And after 24 years, we've moved the per caps to 12 cups per person. <laughs> So think of it, Japan's at 280 and the U.S. is at 380. If you go to Shanghai, it's somewhere between 100 and 150. And the reason it's that high in Shanghai is because there are 1,150 Starbucks in Shanghai. And just so you know, I think there's potential in Shanghai for us. Can you double what you, need, what you have in China and still not sate the market? We've only said that we would grow to 9,000 by the end of 25. And I'll tell you this. That is just a milestone. There are 3,000, you know, uh, provincial cities, as they would call it. We're only in 500, going to 800 soon. Mm -hmm. There's a city in a, in a province called uh, Anhui. It's called Tongcheng. It has a population of 700,000 people. There's no Starbucks in there. <laughs> and there'll be one in, uh, in 2024. That's incredible. So yeah. I think this is one where we can actually continue to grow. You know, we have 440 stores in Huangzhou, and we only have 365 stores or so in India. Well, um, you're familiar with the Indian market. I mean, theoretically, once you convince people of how great triple ventes are, it could, that could, what, go 10x? I think to me, when I think about what we're saying internationally, you know, is the opportunity is really large. You know, we think that uh, we could be over 55,000 stores. You know, we're going to be opening three out of four stores outside of the U.S. 
but that doesn't take away from the opportunity we have in the U.S. Well, let's talk about that because people were, there were people who said, wait a second, they missed the number. I think you missed the number probably by 10 cups of coffee, eight, eight last time. But I care about consistency, and you know that. To me, the place that needs more Starbucks is the place where I always have to be in a line which is the United States. Can you solve that problem, the throughput problem? By the way, an ice problem for when I get my, my mid-morning or afternoon Starbucks. So, by the way, first of all, it's, I'm really glad to know that at 10 a.m. you're now onto iced, Jim. Oh, I have to. That's what the, all the younger consumers are doing, and I'm really glad to see that you're doing it, too. <laughs> well, if you look at demand in the U.S., the demand in the U.S. is very strong for us, um, and we're doing everything we can to ensure that we beat it. Um, how are we doing that? Well, first of all, um, we are really investing in the operational foundation in our stores. And we've made great progress over the course of the last year. Mm -hmm. Fixing the processes, bringing in equipment like the portable cold foam blender, working and reworking, you know, how we do drive-throughs, drive-through times right. coming down, and also working on staffing and scheduling. Now, you've been a restaurant owner, so you know how important that is. Oh, exactly. And if you just look at wages, and you look at hours, the average barista at a Starbucks today versus a year ago is making 20% more. What it's doing for us, it's bringing more stability into our operations. Our tenure is going up, has gone up 16% over the course of the last year. So by bringing stability, by bringing operating consistency and discipline in the stores, and by bringing in equipment and accelerating renovations, we're gonna be accelerating renovations as well as part of our plan, but it doesn't take away from new stores. We're going to build new stores, too. And these stores are going to be purpose-defined. So by 2025, 40% of our delivery volume will come from delivery-only stores. It takes away that you operation. You are going to do this. I thought that was in the agenda a few years ago. It seemed to have been left by the wayside. Well, COVID does a lot. And yeah, I think COVID what we're doing now COVID. is you've got to appreciate that, you know, we're committed to doing this. And we're going to build purpose-defined stores here in the U.S. Plus, in the U.S., you go to smaller towns and medium-sized towns, and you see the migration of people. We are not saturated in America, no. Jim. Okay, so Starbucks is... A huge position for my charitable trust, and one of the reasons why we, we do appreciate that, that of course, sir, of Thank course, you. is that we like the consistency of your actual numbers. Now, I want to be sure there was a sense from some of the analysts that you did lower your numbers from when we talked with your company last September. I think what you did was make it so that you have reasonable numbers that won't be in the way. Correct. I think what we've done is, first of all, we delivered this year at 12% uh, growth, 14% without 4x. Uh, with a 20% growth in EPS. That's for FY23. That was the top end of our range. Right. As we look into this year, FY24, our comms are 5 to 7%. Our growth is 10 to 12%, which is what we had said last year. And the earnings growth is 15 to 20%. We see a more balanced way to go because we clearly see opportunities with efficiency in addition right. to the growth. So it's a balanced way for us to essentially establish what the targets are for next year. Okay. Now, as I look long term, as I look really long term, what we want to do is set an algorithm out there. See, that's a okay. long term growth. We'll set expectations every year. And what we are building this company to, with the momentum it has, with the strength it has, with the power of this brand, is we're building a business that in the long term will have a comp of 5% or greater, right. will have 10% okay. or greater, and will have an earnings growth of 15% or greater. And every year, we will set guidance as it comes. Okay, now those numbers are important for people, but you know what might be also important, and it might be uncomfortable with this, because you speak of we and you know partners, but you yourself, your background is unique for this. You are a perfect ambassador for a company like Starbucks. You're a person of the world. You have a great background. Can you just give us a sense of who you are to lead Starbucks? Well, first of all, my wife would be upset if I told you this, but I will. You know, <laughs> yeah. we are now in our 25th home in 30 years of marriage. And part of it is because we've had a very global career. Right. So we've lived all over. I come from India. Um, I've clearly, um, you know, I came here to this country with nothing. Um, two suitcases and a pressure cooker because my mother thought I wouldn't eat well. And, you know, it's a real privilege to lead Starbucks and to lead the 460,000 people from around the world. I've lived and worked pretty much all over the place. 19 years as an advisor and consultant. I went to PepsiCo for seven years, right. a variety of different markets. I was at record for north of three years. And then from London, I moved to Seattle. The weather's similar, but, you know, this is an incredible but brand. You also seem to be as home with consumer packaged goods and coffee 
as also technology. You've got a bit of the technologist in you, and that's going to be very important, whether it be through throughput or what the stores look like, or just kind of a staying on top of things. You know, our business is not just a physical business. It's also a digital business. We connect with our customers digitally. One of the things we announced today is, you know, we have 75 million customers that buy us over a 90-day period. But the number of people that we connect with is almost three times that. Now, what we have is a remarkable ability for us to actually advance that. So what we've said today is we're going to double the number of the Starbucks rewards members over the course of the but next But can you years. do that? Do you know that the consumer is strong enough to do that, the consumer worldwide? But, you know, if you see the growth rate in China, 22 million on Starbucks rewards, and it's grown double digits. If you look at the Starbucks Digital Solutions, which is our platform globally, we're building this platform globally along with our partners. They are coming to the app. They are coming to our rewards program, and it gives us a great base of knowledge and insights. Now, that's not just enough. As I get back into how we think about the partner experience and the customer experience, we've always been at the leading edge in always. terms of technology. Now, with this generational change that's taking place, we have sped up our launches of features. It's now every two weeks. Second, we are working with some of the technology pioneers on how we bring Gen AI into our business. You know, over the last five years, we built our own AI and machine language uh, platform, machine learning platform, which is called Debrew. We're going to power our Debrew with Gen AI to take what customers might think about right. in terms of products and trends, right. bring it into how customers order, help the builders to build it, and then link it to marketing. So the marketing that we do basically closes the loop. That's perfect. We're doing that. In addition to that, we're working, you know, with Apple products. In with a, Apple? In an innovation store, yes. Which, with, on, with, with, the, with the Vision Pro, which... No, with, with, with a bunch of the actual uh, products that okay. you use, the, I, sure. the iPad, the iPro, and so on, in stores to help us improve the partner experience. Excellent. With Gen AI, we're collaborating with Microsoft. You know, we have a deep partnership right. with Microsoft for bringing them in. And um, on payments, we've been working with Amazon. And uh, so we're going to continue to extend the experience about how you walk off, you know, uh, without having to go through checkout and the well, like with automated It's a sensational pay. story. Now... Are you satisfied with the reinvention as it's going right now? I think I am. I think we are ahead of plan on reinvention. Okay. And what we've done now is we've triple shotted it. So the triple shot reinvention, and by the way, like a Starbucks order, it's got two pumps. So the triple shot reinvention is about brand, elevating the brand. It's about digital, scaling and strengthening digital. It's about global. We just talked about the fantastic option for global. Now, but we need two pumps because it's a classic Starbucks order. So the first pump is efficiency. Right. We talked about the three billion efficiency program. And the most important pump of all is the partner culture. We've done a great job in terms of rolling out our mission, our promises, our values to our partners. We live our life through our partners and through their eyes. And so it's really important that we reinvigorate that too. All right, well, that's a great way to end it. That's Lakshman Narasimhan. He's the CEO of Starbucks. And now you, I will treat you to a gingerbread chai. Thank Apples. you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Coming up, their quarter had few blemishes to conceal. Should Elf Beauty make up a core position in your portfolio? Kramer's got the CEO next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.